Last week when I made the new tabletop for the outdoor table, I used this router bit to put a decorative edge on the tabletop. At the time I didn't know what this router bit was called, so I referred to it as a decorative table edge bit. It turns out that it's referred to as a thumbnail bit, a table edge thumbnail bit. This bit is now made by Whiteside Router Bits and sold through Bits and Bits. So if you do want this router bit, I have an affiliate link down in the description below. This isn't a sponsored video, but I do have an affiliate link. So I bought this bit way back in the 90s. I used it on a few projects and I used it most recently on that tabletop. And it does add, I think, a nice decorative element on certain projects. I think it really works with that table base and it adds uh, kind of uh, just an elegance to certain projects. Of course, it depends on what you're building. So let's go ahead and take this base plate off. We'll put the one that I made on here, kind of adjust the bit, take a closer look at it, and then cut the profile. And uh, maybe I'll cut the profile on three quarter two, just to see what it looks like. Chances are you will need to make a base plate to use this router bit. So you'll remove the plate that came with your router, use that to locate where you need to drill and countersink holes, and then use a straight edge to find the center of the new plate and cut a two and three quarter inch hole to accommodate the bit. Now I can go ahead and throw the bit in the router. Of course, the router is not plugged in. That's good. And even before I plug it in, I can use a straight edge to adjust the depth of the bit. Of course, I don't want to be that deep on the first pass, so I'll loosen it up. This router is a little funky because it is as old as the bit so it's maybe 30 something years old and here i'm just catching a little bit of that round over so i can go ahead and check that out first i'm using a five quarter off cut to demonstrate this profile five quarter always measures just about an inch and a sixteenth and things to remember is you always want to keep the router moving when you stop you're likely to get burns and it's also a good idea to make your first cuts on the end grain. If you have any tear out, that can get cleaned up when you're cutting your profile on the long grain. So that was the first pass, and as you can see, it's kind of a, a gentle round over. And I could see using this profile right here on the bottom of maybe a mantle top or a cabinet top. So just because the profile has a flute doesn't mean you need to use it. You can use whatever part of the router that works best for your project. So it's kind of neat to see something like this because then you think, oh, okay, that'll soften up the underside of a tabletop, a cabinet top, a bookcase, whatever it happens to be. But that's not what we're going for. We want to see what the full profile looks like. So now I'm going to readjust the height of the bit and I'll grab a straight edge somewhere around here. And let's see. This is a kind of an odd router. It doesn't adjust that easy. That actually looks pretty good. I'm just starting to catch the flute when I hit that with the straight edge. I've lowered the bit a little more and you can see I'm getting just about an eighth of an inch of that flute so we'll go ahead and make a third pass.
I ended up getting some pretty severe burning here, and that's because the piece wasn't properly clamped in place. So it started to move as I was pushing the router along. So it's just a good illustration how you need to think of cord management because you don't want your cord get, to get caught. And is your workpiece properly clamped in place like mine wasn't? I didn't think of the new armor table that I have here now because it's new and it's just not part of my workflow yet. But this is kind of like the first time I'm using it. It's actually really cool. These, these uh, clamp down dogs, I can see are definitely going to be handy. So now that it's clamped down again, or it's clamped down properly, I've lowered the blade just a little bit more and I'll try to clean up that burn mark by running the router over the profile one last time. Okay, so still a little burning, but not really that bad. And you can see that that has to do with the configuration of the grain. Really important to have your workpiece clamped in place. You can see that I've got a nice clean profile, no chatter. It's really important to just make sure that the only thing you need to think about when you're working with that router is to keep the router moving at a nice even pace. Okay, well, that should give you a pretty good idea of what you can do with that router bit and how to use it. So the last project I used it on was on the tabletop and I thought it really worked. It added a nice design element, maybe a little bit more elegance to the project instead of just the rounded over top. I also did add a slight round over at the bottom on that project, which created kind of a bull nose. So you don't just have to use one router, but you can do whatever you like. It's kind of the sky's the limit. And I did go ahead and cut the same profile into a piece of three quarter material so I can show you the difference between a five quarter and a three quarter. And after cutting that profile, I realized that I'll definitely be using this sometime down the road as perhaps a bookcase top. I could imagine putting a small piece of cove underneath it or maybe even an entrance tabletop. I like the way it makes the board look so much thinner yet you still have the three quarter inch material. Thinner edges on boards always look more elegant to me. So anyway, it's a good bit. And like I said, I'll have a link to it in the description below. If you're looking for a woodworking project, I hope that you'll check out my website. I've got more than 20 project plans on my website and they all have video tutorials right here on YouTube. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time. If you would like to build the furniture for your home, visit my website at johnpeters.com and check out my furniture project plans. These professional step-by-step -step plans along with video tutorials right here on YouTube will help you build high quality furniture that will last a lifetime.